Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a match, a rather recent match that I actually played with Vikarin on Desecrated Temple. So, I'm gonna start off in third person. So, Vikarin is actually in. I'm sorry. Vikarin is in the 9 o'clock or. Yeah, 3 o'clock position playing CISO, and Shadow Fury is in the 9 o'clock position playing Grekum. Shadow Fury has not yet chosen his race yet. Sorry, he has chosen Grekum, but he hasn't quite chosen what to do with him himself yet. Still in the present, or at least Vikarin can't see it. Vikarin, however, is going for 4 RPs to an importer, and actually has a very nice little Sim City here. It will be difficult for Shadow Fury's units to get in between this, especially because of the resource processors behind the importer. That being said, the importer is in fact the most important target in this base. So, starting out the game, just a little bit of pre-game chatting about the network conditions, which seem to be pretty fair for the most part throughout. And Shadow Fury is now doing his thing. We see what he's doing from Vikarin's point of view. Setting up his Seppi and Faro to regenerate, and Vikarin's just jumped back a few seconds to handle his own stuff a bit more in detail. Actually making an even better SimCity, so it'll be impossible for, my, for Shadow Fury's units to get between the Armory and the Importer, or between the Importer and the RPs. So much harder to get out of this, and a bit worried about Vikarin, but he seemed to be okay for the rest of the match, so I'm not too worried ultimately. Shadow Fury is about a minute ahead of here. He is, from his point of view, he is building up RPs from his Octos. At his point of view, the RPs have been built. This is about a minute up at the 216 mark. And building up also two Octos and a Faro, as well as getting an early reef or trying to, but getting blocked by the Octo. Yeah, getting two Faros and an Octo, sorry, two Octos and a Faro, because two Octos and a Faro was something that I actually thought would have been a good idea, possibly as a off slight offensive strategy early on. Desecrated Temple is, while a large map, it isn't a map that's hard to rush on, so I wasn't sure what Vikarin, or Shadow Fury, clearly not sure what Vikarin's going to be doing, and building up a small offensive force to have some insurance, also jumping back to make sure the, the Arcticus is in the right spot. Vikarin is now the 149 mark, continuing to build up his economy, getting 7 LCRPs and 1 QP, so definitely focusing heavily on looks like early game units, getting his special ops and marine scout seeing that Shadow Fury is not in the 12 or 6 o'clock positions, so obviously in the 9 o'clock position, will be now changing his course to figure out where best course to attack. He obviously knows the 9 o'clock position, but of course he only has marine and sop, which aren't that formidable against the Grecan base class units on their own. That being said, marine is a builder unit, so it is quite flexible being able to actually build a base outside of the base. And here we see the Importer and, and RPs being built once again, and the Spec Ops and Marine are going straight towards Shadow Fury's base. Shadow Fury, on the other hand, at this point in time, only getting the Octos, the initial Octos. And back when he is about now three minutes up, continuing to fast forward throughout this, moving the Octo and Faro Scout Group to the 6 o'clock position as well to figure out what's going on there, and not seeing Vikarin fairly soon. The Reef has been built and also Advanced Structures and Spire being built, so at the 355 mark, Shadow Fury should be able to get some air units pretty rapidly. To went back to the 231 mark, just to double check, obviously he can't find anything in the 6 o'clock position, so jumping up to the 12 o'clock position to figure out if Vikarin is located there. Now jumping back to Vikarin's point of view, both players are focused at this point in time, and Vikarin getting another QPRP, so setting up his economy a bit more healthily, a bit more for tech. Shadow Fury not too worried about anything going on, just sending out scout forces directly towards the 6 o'clock position, realizing that Vikarin is over there, scouting probably by audio. And, yes, yeah, so you can actually hear through the fog of war, you just can't see through it, obviously. It makes sense if you understand the way the game is set up. So, anyway, setting up the Octos to be in a bit of a better position in case they find anything, and they find nothing so far, but from Vikarin's point of view, they actually do find something. The Octos and Faro's, a proxy factory being built by Vikarin at the 232 mark, is going to be quite the threat for Shadow Fury. He's going to have to deal with this rapidly. Thankfully, with the two Faro, two Octos and Faro strategy, this won't be too difficult to do. It'll simply be a matter of actually being able to do it in time. Unfortunately, factories are very... Well, unfortunately, but factories are very strong buildings. So, being able to destroy one is often a waste of time. That's why I said importers are the best targets. Importers are weak, and they store reserves which CISO requires to build their units. Anyway... Octos coming in. Octos killing the Spec Ops and the Marine. The Octos have actually safely gotten rid of the factory, but of course Vikarin has jumped back. From his point of view, he is quickly building up a mech and actually moving his factory. Is he moving his factory at all? Yes, he is. He is. Marine is undoing his action and looks like he's going to be building the factory right next to the steps of the main shrine, I guess. So the factory is being built much closer to the main center shrine and the 
base for Shadow Fury will be a bit further away, and it's will be harder for Shadow Fury to count this. However, Vikran has very little Chrono Energy left and very few resources, so he's going to be quite tight on being able to actually command this group. Shadow Fury, on the other hand, back at the three-minute mark, sees this factory change, and is able to counter it as well. Unfortunately, losing an Octo in the process, moving back to try to re-micro this, and... Will he be able to do it? It looks like the Octo will die. No, the Octo will die again, but he might... He still has a chance to fix this up. Looks like he's not too concerned, though. Getting advanced charges again at the 315 mark. This is a bit later than before. Maybe a bit later than before. Looks like the Spire will not be getting up as early as it did last time. Vikarin still focused early on. And now getting ATHCs and mechs out of the factory. And, of course, the Faro is there, so ATHCs aren't a huge threat, but still a bit of a threat. And now... And this is when advanced charges was researched at 307 mark. 310 mark is roughly when it was researched, and the units have all been killed. So Vikarin isn't going to have a very easy time getting out of this, and in the unplayable pass, or very near it, very few resources left, getting machinery for himself, and continuing to develop his main base quite effectively. And now Shadow Fury is just avoiding the factory entirely, because like I said, it's a bit of a waste of time to attack. Still spent a fair amount of time attacking it, but going now for the main base directly, try to get rid of any importers. And an ATHC coming in for Vikarin to the main base, and this is going to be rather powerful. The attack, Shadow Fury's attack, as you can see, did quite a bit of damage, and once he gets up to it, or actually, I can always go by the Observer. You can see in the pre the Observer actually is already looking back here, and the attack will actually not be super successful, I, if I recall. So the attack coming in, and Importers are there to be attacked, and ATC coming in as well, but Faros and Sebis are in place to deal with the mechs. The ATCs as well will be dealt with, no problem. So Vikarin is going to have a hard time dealing with this. This is the 438 mark, and his Importers are getting heavily damaged. Both of his importers getting damaged. One of them not going down, of course, because it's not getting damaged enough. And the factory is now getting attacked directly, but that is also probably going to be changed. A Sebi Pod coming up for the sake of further cloak detection if necessary. So now Shadow Fury definitely has air units and is making use of them. AGC, however, in the base of the 424 mark, Shadow Fury jumping back to handle this. Will not be super effective, though. The ATC is coming back to try to defend, and a macro path has been built by the mech. An Octo. Yes, it's an Octo. It looks like he's building a dome. This dome will be very useful just as a way of getting rid of the factory without too much effort. And Reef coming up as well to help heal it in case it does get attacked, which it very likely will. And the importers are going down for Vikran inside his base. Vikran has three reserves, and it looks like. Yes, two of them are in that importer, so that's the more important importer at this point. But Shadow Fury's forces are a little bit. Un are a little bit disorganized at that point. The Faro's getting rid of the ATHC, far more focused on this attack and trying to build up forces while being basically proxy rushed. Though in Akron, that's not quite the same as in other RTS games. Proxy rushing is actually pretty easy to deal with. It still requires a fair amount of aggression, but it's not an unusual strategy. All races have fairly non restrictive building restrictions, or no real building restrictions, honestly. So. All races can proxy fairly easily, and really it's not hard to counter because you see it coming and you go back and change what you did to handle it. That being said, Shadow Free did have a good setup to start with to handle a proxy strategy in case it came up. So the dome is going to be able to get rid of the factory fairly quickly. And no, a Martank has come up for Vikarin from the Macrofab, and another Martank is in production. This will be able to get rid of the dome quite effectively. Shadow Free, at his point in time, the 636 mark, has destroyed the importer and is in a really good spot right now. A Marine coming down for Vikarin. Looks like it's ready to build a second base when necessary. And Shadow Freak jumping back, realizing that a lot of his attack has been undone, and seeing the Martanks are attacking the Reefs, trying to find a way to get rid of this, and a Farabod coming up is the solution once it actually gets in the base, and is going to attack, is going to cloak, and should be able to very quickly take care of these Martanks, who have destroyed the Reef, quite unfortunately, but Reefs are cheap, so a new one will be coming fairly shortly, I'm sure. Importers as well for Vikarin inside his expansion. So his importers have been lost. He is a bit behind in terms of reserves. We can see he is stocking quite a bit on all his resources, but has few reserves to help actually use them. Though he isn't producing as well as he could be, we aren't looking at his point in time, so we don't know exactly what he's doing. At his point in time, we see that, or actually quite behind his point in time, just double checking what's going on. The Tornod has come back to attack the Faro and Octo, but they did their job. They destroyed the importers, slowed Vikarin down considerably. And Vikarin is also going to deal with the Faropod attacking his Mars. The Tornod was out of position to get rid of that Faropod. The Tornods are cloak detectors, after all. So the Tornod is going down as well, but not before he's able to get rid of this Faropod, or at least start to attack it. Octopod and, well, Octopods aren't going to do much good, but the Octopod will, trying to get rid of the Tornods. But the Martank will be a very powerful deterrent against them. 
can be very difficult for Shadow Fury to actually deal with this. Shadow Fury, from his point of view, has managed to rebuild the dome, but it won't last that long. Getting back some Sephis, trying to push them back into better position to fight the Tornaz, but still doesn't have a good position to work from, I'm afraid. Vikran back in his base is starting to build up RPs as expansion, getting rather healthy economy going, while Shadow Fury is still moving a bit behind. He does have RPs at his expansion as well, but still somewhat behind, and the dome is going to be able to get rid of the Tornad just in time to get this Pharopod a safe safe window of opportunity to get rid of these Mar Tanks before they deal any real damage. Barely saving Shadow Fury from that, because that was starting to get quite high pressure, but Shadow Fury has managed to get away with this, and setting up some reefs to bubble wrap his main base as well, or at least partially bubble wrap it, in case any attacks come in by air. Tornads have been built already, though right now Vikarin is still a bit behind. His factories have been destroyed, and actually both players are pretty much even now. The factories were destroyed, but Shadow Fury didn't have a huge amount of opportunities to expand and get out of his main base. Now getting legal class, so that will be somewhat effective in making use of the pod class units and also just getting really powerful tech going. And the reef here as well to heal up this dome, which is helping get rid of the macro fab along with another fire pod. The fire pods are powerful enough to get rid of the macro fabs quickly enough to see about 40 damage a shot, and that will be getting rid of it now. At the 955 mark, Vikarin is about a minute and a half behind, still sees the macro fab alive, but I'm sure he knows it's dead soon. Is building the factory, is just getting his base set up, and actually running out of resources. He has another factory further back in his main, or his new main essentially, his natural. His actual main is only used for an armory right now. And Shadow Fury is, once again, he's at 9 of 5 marks, so the macro fab is just about to die. Getting legal class units fairly soon, and really, Vikarin is having to rebuild after that partially failed proxy. It did put enough pressure on Shadow Fury to change up his strategy a little bit, but Shadow Fury did have the right strategy to begin with, so Vikarin is going to have to rebuild a little bit and get himself into a better position. Shadow Fury, on the other hand, has decided rebuilding is not what he's going to allow him to do. Sending in Farabots to get rid of these importers before they're able to actually be at all effective. Getting rid of five reserves in that one shot alone, and this one will be the other four reserves most likely. That will be very powerful against Vikram, but Vikram is sending up a Tornad, which will be able to counter this, and Shadow Fury, not sure if he's aware of this yet, but there is a Tornad coming in. However, the Tornad is going to be out of position to deal with the Farapods. It is attacking the main base directly. Frigates are, a Frigate is in the main, but it is going to be, or near the main, in the actual center area. But will, it will be destroyed quickly, and a Tornad coming in will be attacking the Farapod. will be killing one of the Farapods, actually, so the other Farapod will be going out on its own to get rid of the importers that will not be fast enough to be effective. Another Tornad will likely be coming up very shortly, and Vikarin, no, Mech coming up actually, and here we see the importers are being attacked again, but much more slowly, and this is going to be problematic. This is the least important importer, most likely, so this will not be a good position. Vikarin, on the other hand, at the 10-19 mark, has seen his Tornado come in. He has put a Tornado into a better position, sending it back to the main base to help defend these importers. Probably the best idea. These Farpod will be coming in to continue to attack but it won't be as effective. Unfortunately, the Sepipod is also hanging back. Sepipod is hanging back, actually, to help progenerate some legal class units, while a bunch of Sepis and Faros and Octos are produced. Just to try to make use of the resources. Unfortunately, Shadow Fury did forget to macro a little bit during that engagement. Having to make up for it now by just macroing, jumping forward in the future, macroing a bit more. So we see his forces are starting to build up quite rapidly. And the Sepipod, unfortunately, moving away when it doesn't want to. Though we'll be able to get rid of this Tornad, the Farpods have already been killed, so it's not much use. Vikarin does have another Tornad going around the map, and the Superbot has gotten rid of the first Tornad, but not without losing more than half of its health in the process. However, an army, a small army of Sippies, Faros, and Octos are coming down to attack. Shadow Fury jumping back to the 11-16 mark to control these in a bit more detail, and also to get this Sepipod back when it should be, where it should be, because that should be here progenerating some, Oct some Faro Legos, not going out and attacking. Not yet, anyway. Though admittedly, some Sepipods far pods would be welcome. Another Arctic is coming in as well to help in the middle of the map, just sort of a bit of a tank, and to help if he wants to move to the north, wants to expand to the north, which is not a bad idea. A mount is also in the center shrine to help view what's going on, though in a rather vulnerable position. Should probably have something built around it. Vikarin, on the other hand, is at the 1220 mark. He has three macrofabs up and two factories, finally doing what I like to see what all these players do, which is build healthy amount of production structures. You could use maybe another factory or two, but still three macrofabs is a healthy amount of macrofabs, especially if he's building up some of the higher price units, like heavy cruisers or blackbirds. That will be incredibly effective at 
getting through his reserves of cash. Though admittedly, Akron being the game that it is, isn't a game where you have to necessarily use all your reserves all at once. It's sometimes safer to be a bit safe with your money, but regarding that safety with money, it looks like Afraid is going to be going down to a bunch of base class units without killing anything in return. So quite a bit of money lost there. Base class units, however, are not going to be as effective against Tornados. Tornados are bombers, and they're going to be very effective against all these set pieces. Mostly it's Octos, actually, so set pieces are not going to be enough to get rid of this, and the Octos are going to go down rapidly. The Octos have changed their changed their mind. Shadow Fury has gone back to reorder them to attack the base directly, avoid the air battle completely, because they're going to be of no use against air units, having no range and no air attack. Running to the main base... And the other units are trying to support, but unfortunately, frigates are in the main base to get rid of them, so they will be of no use as well. Unfortunately, rather, rather big waste of money for Shadow Fury, I'm afraid. So he's gonna have a hard time coming back from this. He doesn't have, well, he has a lot of LC, but not a lot of QP. And moving his RPs already to the natural expan or to the island expansion in the northwest. However, still not building a whole lot of RPs and. Unf looks like, yes, there is a set of units in the north, but they aren't being set up for regeneration. Shadow Fury seems to have missed that, unfortunately, and kind of out of chrono energy, too. While Vikarin does have a large army of air units, frigates and tornads can be very effective against pretty much everything that Shadow Fury is throwing out, because Shadow Fury is starting to focus a lot on air, getting Sepi Legos, getting Sepi Pods. This will be rather difficult for Shadow Fury to deal with. And an RP, Shadow Fury's RP and his third expansion is destroyed rather rapidly. And now he's well aware that there's a very large air force coming in to attack him from the south. He is going to have to figure out something to deal with this very quickly. Sepi Legal coming in to try to deal with this and to help out, but it looks like it's going to be in a bad spot trying to deal with this, but I'm sure, I don't think it's going to be able to deal with this, and it looks like... You know what? No, it's actually managing to get rid of the frigates. The Tornons were distracted, and the frigates were also distracted. Sepi Legal was able to destroy two frigates for free. Starting to attack the head Tornon. will be able to kill that quite effectively. Vikarin has jumped back a little bit to edit around this attack. Other Seppies as well coming in. A bunch of Seppies being produced for Shadow Fury just in time to help deflect this attack, but it looks like it was mostly a scouting attack. Vikarin's forces are hanging outside of the south of Shadow Fury's main, while Shadow Fury's RPs are setting up so he gets his economy going again. Unfortunately, the north base didn't get set up properly, and that will be very problematic for Shadow Fury, because that north base would have allowed him to get more RPs and get a much more stable economic foundation. At this point, he's going to have to get Seppi and Faro just to come up. Build that Faro, probably not sure if he's going to survive that attack, so spare Arcticus just in case. And now the base class units are having to be scout standing outside of... Well, actually, he's not even in the third. It's a 6 o'clock third that Vikran has taken are going to be going down. So Vikran is basically moving around the map in a clockwise formation here. His main base is practically abandoned. His natural expansion is his current main, but he is building up towards the third of the center, and he's probably going to go for the 6 o'clock here afterwards. That's going to be a bit of a problem for Shadow Fury if he doesn't realize this in time. Shadow Fury now getting quite a few more base class units, really trying to make use of that LC that he had built up. And another small fight coming in, a Seppi Pod coming in and will be fighting off a frigate, but unfortunately it is not powerful enough to get rid of that frigate on its own. Seppi Lugo and Faropod in the back trying to defend, but won't be as effective. Shadow Fury did move out, has moved out actually further in the future with the Seppi, Pod, Seppi Lugo and Faropod attacking the main base. Unfortunately a bad move Probably figured that the importers were rebuilt in the main base, but no, they were still in the in the expansion, so going down to try to deal with those, and this will be rather difficult for him to deal with. That is rather difficult for Vikram to deal with, but he is further in the past, he's going to have an easier time actually dealing with this. And he is attacking some of the Seppis coming in already, and Octolio coming in to help support them, but that's not going to be enough on its own. And the Seppi Lego and Farapod coming in, trying to help out, getting rid of... Well, Stone Beam attacking one of the frigates, but not doing much good. Blackbird is... Two Blackbirds, actually, with the attack group. And a bunch of Seppies and Faros coming in to try to help out. With an Octa coming in to try to build... Looks like Faros trying to build a dome in the middle of the map. Yes, it is! Unfortunately, not going to be done in time. And another Dome Beam attacking the Tronod. Once again, that's still not enough units. Shadow Fury really doesn't have a whole lot of units compared to what Vikran has. Vikran has managed to build up his forces and keep them alive. Unfortunately, Shadow Fury lost an entire army earlier on in the game. So Shadow Fury is going to have a very hard time rebuilding from this point. And another Dome Beam coming in. More Seppies, more Faros. Trying to get rid of this attack. And one of the Tronauts is left. If the Tronaut goes down, no, the Tronaut is not being targeted. Shadow Fury has not... He should be focusing on the Tronaut. He's jumping back. And he is now focusing on that Tronaut. Make sure all his forces are attacking it directly before it deals any real damage. And now the Frigates aren't going to be enough to take care of the Seppies and Octoligo. Which will get rid of all of Vikram's forces. 
Very nice micromanagement by Shadow Fury there. Not huge, but still enough. Building more side goes. Looks like he's probably going to try to once again harass Vigorin's base. And Vigorin jumping back. Has not retreated. Doesn't look like he's going to retreat, actually. Actually, he couldn't retreat. All of his attack was an unplayable pass, and he doesn't have enough chrono energy to deal with everything here. Nothing is hierarchied anymore. The hierarchy leader was killed, and that will be the end of that particular attack group. Which is a lot of money for Vikran, but unfortunately for Shadow Fury, Vikran did manage to deal a lot of damage and secure two more bases. Shadow Fury only really has two bases running, and even then, the North Island isn't doing very well for itself. This north base, unfortunately, the 12 o'clock base was not properly expanded to, and if that was, this game might have turned out a bit more different at this point in time. However, at a minute and a half further in the future, looks like Shadow Fury has actually managed to see some Blackbirds. I wonder if Elliot and... There were Blackbirds here, and Shadow Fury is now going to be trying to expand to the north, has two Sepi Legos, and will be sending the Sepi Legos in to help defend, try to make sure that these forces that are going forward to expand aren't going to be harassed unduly in the process. And Sepi Legos have seen the Blackbirds, and they are going to start attacking the Blackbirds. One of them is attacking directly, and the other one is going in just to make sure that there's nothing in the main base itself. These Blackbirds are not dealing enough damage to... Actually, they aren't dealing any damage to Sepi They're attacking the Faro exclusively, and the Sepi here is going to be dealing enough damage to handle them on its own. And the other Sepi will be coming back to help handle them as well. One of the Blackbirds is down, the other Blackbird is going down soon. The Frigate is attacking the Sepi and a Faro Pod Cloak is helping out as well, getting rid of the Blackbird... Make sure that the frigate doesn't get healed much longer. Shadow Fury, or sorry, I'm gonna go to Vikran first. He's closer to us now. It's 1930 mark. The Blackbirds, more Blackbirds are built up in Vikran's base. He's building up heavy cruisers as well from his macro fabs and starting to build up in the six o'clock expansion as I predicted. Well, okay, actually, I played this game, so obviously I would know. But for the sake of assuming, let's pretend that I didn't play this game and it's the first time I've seen it. So, the six o'clock expansion is being developed and Shadow Fury isn't aware of it yet. He's going down, trying to attack the main base. Probably attacking those importers he went for before. It's going to be rather difficult, though. There's a lot of heavy cruisers to deal with this. Vikran is quite aware of this, but Shadow Fury does have Chrono Porting available, and it looks like he's probably going to be going back and actually using it on these units. So, jumping, see what's going on, and he is going to Chrono back a Far Pod and probably Chrono, back, chrono Port back the other units as well once he gets the chance. Secondly, go Chrono Ported back. Unfortunately, not queued to attack the importers. Rather unfortunate, but it will be attacking the importers occasionally in between RP attacks. So at the very least, it will still somewhat undermine Vikarin. But Vikarin is going to have an easy time. His reserves are not going to be affected at all. He has almost full reserves in all three importers. If any of those are destroyed, or all of those are destroyed, rather, that would be a huge blow. Although he still has two importers in his six o'clock base. The three importers he has now, if those were destroyed, that would be a huge blow and would greatly undermine this army. Unfortunately, that was not queued in the unplayable past attack. So Shadow Fury is going to have a hard time dealing with this. Vikarin, however, not too concerned about this. Attacking Shadow Fury's base directly and probably will be dealing a lot of damage. Don't be coming in to damage this Blackbird, but will not be enough. Obviously, there's a large army right behind it. So once this green time comes, we'll see what goes on with Vikarin. And Shadow Fury didn't actually end up dealing a huge amount of damage to Vikarin's base. Really, all he might have dealt was a little bit of undermining damage. It looks like maybe on the order of a, f like a few hundred LC or 100 LC, maybe 100 QP, maybe that he may have delayed it, so not a huge impact. Unfortunately, like I said, that really needed to be the importer attack, and it was not. Shadow Fury's forces are not going to be enough at this point to deal with this heavy cruiser. He'll probably end up using Chrono Porting quite a bit to deal with this, or try to, but at this point, it's very going to be very difficult for Shadow Fury to actually come back from here. And the green time has come. Vikarin does have no real change to his forces, at least the forces in his base. However, Farapod is attacking the importers, and here we go, that's... What should have happened, but should have happened a bit earlier when those forces were produced in the first place. So Vikarin still got those forces produced, but future forces are going to be harder to produce. However, with 10 reserves in stock, he's going to not have much of a problem building a large enough army to deal with what Shadow Fury has left. Shadow Fury trying to deal with it with a Sepi Ligo and actually Chrono Porting back. Or no, just double checking his Chrono Port back when he did it, seeing what's going on. And one of the importers was actually destroyed earlier on, but not early on enough to destroy everything that Vikarin had. So Vikarin. Looks like the Red Time Wave might actually bring about a smaller army for Vikarin. Though it's hard to say, it looks like the, the way the Time Waves are going, yeah, Vikarin probably actually ended up winning fights. He has also changed his tactic, attacking from the north instead of from the south, hitting the Arcticus tank that was put up before, and also attacking the only real base that Shadow Fury has. Look, Shadow Fury has expanded to the 12 o'clock by now, but still, it's not enough. Shadow Fury really needs to start expanding more rapidly, get more of the bases. Actually, should have been doing that about 10 minutes ago. 
building more rapidly when he was starting to attack. Unfortunately, he didn't do that. Not quite enough multitasking going on. So Vikrin is going to have a bit of an easy time getting through this. However, chronoporting, more chronoporting going on for Shadow Fury. And it looks like that's probably going to be going on right next to this little importer here. So that will be trying to deal a bit more damage to the importers further in the past, but not sure how much damage it will really deal. And yes, there is a Farapod back here actually attacking the Macrofab, but that won't be effective at all. All the units that are built are already built. And Sebi Ligo also is being chronoported back and trying to deal with damage it can, but won't be enough. It's going to be destroyed. So that Sebi Ligo was chronoported back for nothing, not chronoported back in time to assist itself, though it may still have damaged what it needed to damage. The Blackbird there is going to mitigate a lot of that damage. So, Shadow Fury is in a very tight spot right now. Currently trying to figure out what to do with his forces. Getting an RPs outside of his main base, because of course some of the RPs really aren't many crates left in his main base to pull from. Sebi Ligo is trying to harass Vikran's RPs directly, but Vikran has a huge resource stock. It's not going to be very effective. And a bunch of Sebi Pods coming in. If some of those survive, you will be able to chronoport them back to help out with the attack in the first place, which will be enough to deal with what happened, but unfortunately... Not in a good position to deal with it. Needs to chronoport them back as soon as he can. He isn't doing so, and this could be highly problematic. Needs to chronoport them back to when the Sebi Liga was actually attacking. And he will be able to deal with this somewhat, but Vikran, however, has moved back. And is actually losing a lot of his... He's losing a lot of his production in his main base, but he is building up more in the 6th block, building up more factories, and he still has a large enough army to deal with this. So both players are... Kind of a bit of a stalemate. Shadow Fury's Chronoport has actually been quite effective. And Shadow Fury is actually Chronoported again. Getting some another Sepi Legal back here and some more Sepi Pods as well to deal with that attack in the past and moving away from it. Moving back once again to get even more units, trying to get some defenses just Chronoported back, and that will be somewhat effective. It looks like he's actually trying to echo out. Yeah, it looks like most of these Chronoports won't necessarily go through. Yeah, as you can see, the Chronoport departures are actually dropping off the timeline. But the Echoes should be enough to at least help deal with these forces, delay them somewhat, so we can actually send real forces back, these three Sepi Ligos, for example, back in time to really deal with the attack, rather than just deal with it partially. Unfortunately, it looks like they're going to be sent back here. No, moving them better into a better position, or slightly better position. No, even then, that's a poor position. But the Farbot doing a very good job, and all being assisted by itself, and Ultra Ligo along with itself going back to deal even more damage. And the Sepi Ligos, some Sepi Ligos actually are in a good enough position to deal with this attack, and these will be real Sepi Ligos, not echoed Sepi Ligos. So this will be a very consistent attack. Unfortunately for him, the Red Time Wave has moved Vikran's forces. So Vikran did move away and is attacking the Arcticus, which will be very difficult to deal with. So Shadow Fury continuing to try to deal with this with a series of uppercuts. But it isn't the best move right now. He really, like I said, needed to have more units in the past. But he is managing to get out of the bind he was in originally. Vikran, from his point of view, at the 25-45 mark. We've been here for a while, haven't we? But it's been exciting, and the 2545 mark, he has three full, actually, well, two and a half fully resourcing bases, and a bunch of crates he could, actually, could he pull from these? Uh, yes, he could easily pull from these for at least a few more minutes, and more tanks coming in. Very nice little switch of strategy, because tanks are good generalist units, and most of the units that Shadow Fury has right now are anti-air, especially these massive seppies that are coming in, probably going to be used for chronoporting. And on the red time move, we see that really bad position right now, but Sepipods and Farapod coming in to try to deal with this attack, finish it off once and for all to help themselves or help their Sepiligo partners out. And hopefully we'll be able to get rid of this. Blue Time Wave is the one that will be carrying that little fix to the timeline that Chrono ported back for Shadow Fury. So Shadow Fury will be in a much better position. And the Tornod has finished off the Farapod right before it managed to kill the Macrofab as well. So Vikarin just barely defending that one Macrofab. And more Sepi Ligos being chronoported back to help defend, but at this point it's not really necessary. So Shadow Fury has quite effectively used chronoporting to defend himself, but unfortunately not a lot of resources left, and sending back some of the Sepi, Pod, Sepi Ligos, I mean, to deal with the Northwest Island. Mechs coming in for Vikarin. Vikarin actually at Mechs, which will be somewhat effective, but Vikarin at the 26-29 mark will have to deal with the Blue Time Wave, which will be changing a lot of what happened. That blue time wave is what fixes it for Shadow Fury and will be deflecting Vikran's attack. As you saw, all those red, little red marks came in, so that was also Vikran's attack ending here instead of here. So it's about the 25 minute mark instead of the 26 minute mark. And now the blue time wave is going to be coming across. We'll be changing things. We'll see what happens. And yes, yeah, Shadow Fury has managed to recover his base, avoided getting it killed in the first place, and the green time wave looks like it is actually 
reinforcing this. So Shadow Fury is in a bit of a reinforced loop. Getting that attack even more damaged in the past. So definitely not a paradox. A nice little positive feedback attractor. Unfortunately for him, all these tanks coming in are going to be quite powerful and quite damaging. Sepulchigos are powerful against ground, and of course Octoligos are here as well. But the amount of forces is kind of low, and the amount of Sepulchigos coming in... Sepulchigos are actually going in trying to attack the main, the natural expansion, and will be enough to get rid of everything here. Unfortunately, Shadow Fury has just realized that this expansion here, the 6 o'clock, exists and doesn't have a huge amount of units in place to deal with it. And this is going to become a problem. What he really needs to do is... Just try to hunt down importers, get rid of these importers, get rid of these importers, and try to do it as soon as he can. Unfortunately, Vikarin has a bit of a, well, a bit of an advantage given that he has been able to build up this whole base without being hindered. And now it looks like Shadow Fury is starting to move back. No, he is com he's moving into Vikarin's main, and he's going to be able to get rid of two of the importers, but he needs to get rid of all of the importers in order to have an effect, not just two of them. I'm not sure if Shadow is going to be able to move back in time. He does have a lot of base class teams, a lot of Sepis coming in, and that's going to be a problem. The Faros, Faros would be a much better choice, or possibly Octos, but probably Faros for the base class units as LC sinks. And more Sepis goes coming in. Green Time has, like I said, there's more positive feedback loops, so Shadow Fury has even more forces to work with. But unfortunately, he has also lost a lot of the forces that were coming back to deal with this. He moved, no, he actually moved his forces to attack the south base first which won't be as effective. The forces for Vikarin have already moved back. What really needs to be done, the best thing to possibly do right now would, I, would be probably to Chronoport back and hit those importers in the past. And it looks like that's exactly what Shadow Fury is trying to do. Chronoport backs and forces to flank. But it looks like they're not in the best position. Unfortunately, this factory right in the way of the importer, Shadow Fury not knowing what the base composition was, unable to scout it before attacking. So he has put himself in a bit of a bad position to deal with this and a bunch of base class units coming in, a bunch of Sepis coming in, like I said before, kind of bad choice and tanks will be dealing quite a bit of damage, getting rid of that reef in the front the dome dealing what it can to one of the tanks, but one tank going down right now is not going to be that big of a deal really what needs to go down is all half a dozen tanks, and like I said, tanks are very powerful units, and not even that one tank went down, just alive with 13 health, and Sepis was coming back to help defend alongside themselves, so that'll be a bit better, a bit of a positive feedback tractor, but I don't think it'll be as effective as Shadow Fury would like. And the Magrafab taking very little damage from the Sepi, and more forces coming in. Shadow Fury's forces are going to be able to deal enough damage to get rid of that natural, but they need to get rid of this base now. This is the more important base. These importers, these importers, that's what matters right now. And Vikran's attack force is going to be dealing far too much damage. Shadow Fury, he has an expansion to the north, and he's starting to build some units. It looks like he's trying to get some units for a causally independent base, which is causally independent, but not in a good position. Unfortunately, Shadow let his macro falter quite a bit during those attacks. Seven League was coming back to attack the macro fabs. Not necessarily the best choice. However, a lot of forces for Vikarin have that were on production. He did queue a lot, unfortunately, for him. So these Q will be going down quite rapidly. And Vikarin should probably realize that, though. Unfortunately for him, he already spent that money, so Shadow Free is in a better position than he would have been. But had Vikarin built his more macrofabs and actually used the resources that he could have had to build more macrofabs, Shadow Fury would probably have lost already. Shadow Fury chronoporting back, try to help flank, but Vikarin's forces have... Well, they were close enough at the time to help deal with this, and the importers as well, not going to be able to be dealt with. Except the natural. The natural's fine, but really this, these are the importers that matter now. And these ones as well. So it looks like Shadow Fury really just had some poor timing when it came to actually dealing with this. And his base has been completely destroyed. There really isn't enough forces for him right now to deal with this. The Spire is in the north base, as well as a reef for healing, and probably another couple reefs for bubble wrapping. Sepipod and Octopod coming in for the sake of more legal class units. Vikarin at the 3122 mark is going to be probably not losing the Macrofab in any quick hurry. Actually, this Macrofab should be fine. 640 health is quite a bit, so the Sepi Ligo is not going to be enough to deal with it, and now all the legal class units will be destroyed once this one dies at the 3142 mark. All legal class units are dead. There are some Sepis here, but they aren't going to be able to do anything at this point. No air units left, and all the Mar tanks and regular tanks are starting to move towards the 12 o'clock expansion. Shadow Fury is predicting this will happen and starting to try to build what he can, but unfortunately does not have a huge amount of... I mean, he has a lot of resources, but he doesn't have a lot of chrono energy to deal with this at this point in time. Like I said, he needs to be macroing further in the future. And now trying to send back Sepi goes to help in the unplayable past, and we see on the timeline, it looks like it's helping a little bit, but not very much. The red time wave is where it'll actually come to a head, and we can see that there is more damage being dealt for Shadow Fury. 
but not nearly enough to actually deal with the units coming in from Vikran. Vikran just simply has too much production capacity and too many resources, and even without having the most optimal production capacity, he still has too much production capacity. Farley go attempted to come in, and this is where Shadow Fury really probably regrets not researching specials earlier, because since he doesn't have specials, he can't use the Farley to freeze bomb all these Mar tanks and get rid of them, or just or have freeze bomb all those units before. If he got a Far League earlier, he could have freeze bomb all the units, all those tanks, and then just taken care of them at his leisure. Admittedly, Frigates would have been a problem, but freeze bomb a couple times and the Frigates run out of energy. Would have taken two or three Far Leagues, but it would have been sufficient. It would have definitely done for Shadow Fury. So Shadow Fury is in a very tight spot right now, attempting once again to Chronoport back, and he will have a very hard time doing so. Vikran, like I said, he is going around getting that North expansion, Northwest Island, and Shadow Fury looks like he's going to be Chronoporting back Right now, he is, in fact, chronoporting. We'll see what goes on. Getting that last order queued and chronoporting back the Far Ligo and sending it down to this base to attack. He is going to be probably not dealing a whole lot of damage with it, though. And the Martin coming in to help deal this as well. And it looks like... I don't even know if that Far Ligo... Was that Far Ligo built? I think it was... Yeah, it was built at that point. So the Martanks will not be able to undo that Far Ligo construction. But the Far Ligo doesn't really matter. It is helping support damage the factories, but these mechs here are going to be able to destroy it in no time. And the tanks, of course, as well. This is back at the 3328 mark when that first attack occurred. And the Sepi Ligos were trying to help defend that attack. We're trying to destroy preemptive defense, I guess you could say. Attack Vikran's base before the units could attack Shadow Furies. And Shadow Fury will be losing this base in the north. And I think this is going to be pretty much GG. Shadow Fury is looking at the unplayable pass to see if he can actually fix this up with the Chronoports that he has done. But it really doesn't look like it. these two Martanks are dealing a lot of damage. The Sepipod is helping out a bit, but tanks coming in from the south are going to be able to take care of it quickly enough, and this main triad is going down. The Martanks are very effective. Nice little switch from Vikarin in the mid game to ground tech, responding to Shadow Fury's massive air attack and mostly anti air tech. So Vikarin will be doing a very good job getting rid of this base. Uh, Cloaked Farpod will attempt to hold off, hold the line, make a last stand. But it won't be enough, likely. There isn't even enough chrono energy to chrono board at this point. And no detectors, but still, that one pod, even if it were to chrono board back two or three times, pro still probably wouldn't be enough to deal with these forces sufficiently. That being said, Shadow Fury is still going to try. And more far... Well, Far Lego is, of course, already in the past. And the far pod coming back is, will likely be coming back as well. No, not even then. The far pod has already died. So... Yeah, there's not much more. Far Leo is being re chronoported inside this base, but it was already weakened by the time it got to that point. And yeah, we can see it's it died quickly enough. There was the mechs here already to defend, and that was more than enough to get rid of it. <clears throat> so at the 35-15 mark, going to Shadowfree's point of view, the 35-28 mark, we see that he sees his base is going down. It is going down very rapidly. That will be that will be impossible for him to deal with. It looks like Really, making a, making a last stand, trying to do what he can, but it is enough. GG. Shadow Fury has GG'd. Vikran has won. Very well done to Vikran. That was a very interesting game. Shadow Fury could have played that a lot better. Vikran, of course, did make some mistakes as well, but still, very intense game. Lots of corner reporting. I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night.